Welcome back everybody. My name is Steve Looney from GraphicDesignerTips.com. In today's tutorial, I'm going to be showing you exactly how to build what you're seeing on the screen, which is an 8511 flyer slash mailer slash handout. Now, this is for a local real estate company that I did do work for before, and I am currently still doing work till today, but I did change specific information on it. I changed their personal contact information. I changed the actual house and the actual address of the house. For the purpose of this tutorial so um that is a stock image in the middle i am going to show you how to um set that up correctly for print i'm going to show you how to set up this whole entire piece build it and then save it correctly for print with the actual added bleed um so i'll talk about that you're going to see everything above beyond this black line which is the artboard is your bleed that's what's going to be the most important thing you need to add in the end uh, to make sure that it prints correctly with the color going to the edge. Now, I'm also going to uh, go over some things with fonts and layers and um, an effect right here to make that blur, which I all did in Illustrator. Um, normally, I do this stuff in Photoshop, but, you know, just to change it up a little bit and show you other ways of doing the same thing. We are now in Adobe Photoshop CC 2014, and the very first thing we are going to do is we are going to take that image that is going to be in the background of the piece and we're going to set it correctly so later on you're not going to have an issue when you send this off to a printer and they come back and say hey the image is not saved correctly it's not in cmyk format and then if that happens you're probably going to lose a day or two on the project from being complete and you're going to aggravate your client so what you want to do is you want to come up to file open and we're just going to come up into here into the image that i purchased from big stock photo now like I said, this is a stock photo and many stock photos, you really don't have to do too much color correction on it, which is pretty good in this case. But what I want to first do is I want to come up to image mode CMYK color because it is going to come in as an RGB and we're just going to hit OK on there. And the next thing we're going to do is we're going to come up to image image size. Now, as you can see on the screen, it's basically tell, telling us a couple of things. It's telling us the image is about 19 megabytes, and it's telling us it's at 300 resolution, which is where you want it to be. You don't want it to be any less than that. So it's saying it's 300 resolution at 9 by 6. If you start to scale the image up, it's going to lose a little bit of that quality. So basically this image works perfectly with our piece and i want to explain to you why our piece is eight and a half by eleven and the width of this is looking at its best is telling us it's nine it's right near eight and a half so we don't need to change this image size at all we don't have to uh, alter it at all a lot of times i purchase the really high end stock photography and it's like 20 something you know inches in width and height so then we have to change it because then you have an enormous image size just want to explain that real quick and we're going to hit ok now we're back in adobe illustrator cc 2014 and the very next thing we're going to do is we're going to set this actual document up and get ready to start building it and the first thing we're going to do is we're going to come up to file new and we're going to come straight from the top and go down. We're going to just name this test for right now. We're going to make sure we're using one artboard. We're going to make the size is a letter size. So letter is actual a um, predetermined uh, profile in here. So we're going to click letter. Or you're just going to type in 8 and half, 11. And make sure your units are inches because then you're going to see all types of numbers. You're going to get very confused. Um, you're going to want to add bleed on this. Normally it says zeros all across. And you want to just hit the up arrow and it's going to change all to an eighth of an inch. And then just make sure your advance is CMYK and 300 pixels per inch. Next thing you're going to do is hit OK. I want to explain something really quick. The two things that you are seeing on the screen here, the black line is your artboard. And the red line is the bleed area that your art is going to have to go out to. Now everything between the black and the red, you need to plan that well, the point of that is that's going to get cut off. So you need to plan your design around that. So you don't want to have things uh, too close to the edge. Also, you want to have at least an eighth of an inch margin inside of there. So you don't get anything cutting too close to the edge. Now we're going to build this entire piece. To the left, I have copied my old design and we're just going to redesign it on the right. But basically, I put it over here just to know exactly where everything ends up. 
um, only because there's a lot of refining when it comes to these graphic design layouts and if this video was say 20 minutes the design you know took a few hours to uh, you know going back and forth and revisions with the client and stuff like that so there's a lot of refinement and um, and stuff at the end but I'm gonna breeze through this and explain everything very clearly to you so the very first thing we're gonna want to do is we're gonna want to come up to our rectangle tool and we are going to click right here and we're gonna make an, a rectangle that's eight and a half and we're gonna make the height say three for now the only reason I did that is to just show you the rectangle tool because obviously the height is ridiculously off all right, so what we're now going to do is we're going to sample that color. But if you did not have that color, this is the logo that the client provided to me. So what we're going to do is we're going to click this rectangle right here, come into our eyedropper tool or eye on the keyboard, very simple, easy to remember. And we're going to click this purple right here. And what we're going to do for the future for safekeeping, we're going to come into here in the color and we're going to grab this and we're going to drag it into our swatches so we can use it for later now one thing I did not mention a second ago is I'm going to turn this bleed line off because it's kind of obtrusive and it's, it's bothering me a little bit as every time I design so you don't want to add the bleeds until the end because it kind of throws off how everything is positioned because when you look at this you're, you're, you're looking and saying wow that's really far from the edge when in actuality you know half of that area is getting cut out so what I'm going to come and do here is I'm going to go to View, Guides, Hide Guides, or Command, Semicolon. Next thing we're going to do is we are going to create another rectangle. We're going to go to Option, click this shape, and we're going to hold Shift while we do it. So it'll go straight down, and we're going to shift this down. The next thing we're going to do is we're going to open up this rectangle like so. The next thing we're going to do is we're going to go to file and plates and we're going to place that image called house on the canvas and it's going to come up and we're going to click just like that. So like what I said before in Photoshop, this image looks the best it could be at the exact sizes right now, which is not bad because we just got to actually blow it up just a very uh, little bit. We're going to zoom in on it and it's not going to affect the resolution. You know, somebody might comment say, yeah, it is because you're blowing it up, but Realistically, it's not. I have many years experience in uh, digital printing area and I just know it's going to show up right. So what you want to do is you want to send this object to the back so you can clip it in the purple rectangle we just made. Now you're going to want to go to object arrange send to back or the keyboard command shortcut which is shift command open bracket. Okay. Next thing we're going to do is we're going to select both elements and we're going to either right click or make and make clip and mask or go to object clipping mask make or command seven so there's a lot there's three ways to basically do that which is pretty cool the very next thing we're going to do is hit a on our keyboard and we're going to select the image in the middle when you hit a you have the direct selection think of it like this you're directly selecting what's in the actual clipping mask so you're going to hit e on your keyboard now to transform and you're going to grab a corner point and we're going to scale this up now when you scale if I just scale with my mouse this is what's gonna happen alright you want to scale and hold shift and option at the same time so it goes right through the center point okay now you can let go of shift and option and you can use this other uh, direct selection or a again on your keyboard to move in you're gonna see I'm way too zoomed in so hit E again but scale down a little bit you can also scale by holding shift let go of option so you shift one from the one corner all right that's good enough that's pretty much where I want it to be the next thing we're gonna do is we're going to we're jumping around a little bit but we're gonna go to option click I'm just making all these rectangles for now I'm gonna make that rectangle right there make it a little bit higher I'm gonna go to option click again I like to leave that little white space in there because it breaks it up it's just like a little accent I like to do on my on my work all right so let's see exactly what we did here all right so you guys are gonna like this Basically, what I did here was I took that purple color, and if you see, it's it's in CMYK values right now. We're going to double-click that color in the swatches. We're going to go to Process Color. We're going to change it to Spot Color. We're now going to hit OK. So you see something? We're now going to take this Spot Color, because it's not CMYK anymore. It's viewing it as in its actual own color. So we're going to now change the value 
or the strength of this individual color now. So we're not messing around with more cyan, more magenta, less, you know, so and so. You're going to come into here and you're going to change this to 61. And it's going to lighten it. And let's see. All right, so those purples were actually a little bit different off the bat. So that's okay. We can work with that for this. I did select the image with the eyedropper before, but maybe, we, maybe I did something where I added a little bit more possibly magenta into it at one point. But anyway, uh, we're going to live with this for now. Um, we're going to now come into our pen tool and we're going to draw this little sold area right here. Okay. But actually, before I do that, we're going to come into our layers and I don't use layers very often because I have learned to lock and unlock elements with keyboard command shortcuts. So I don't use layers too much, but we are going to actually use layers in this in this tutorial and what we're going to do is we're going to come into our layers and we're going to click this button right here create new layer it's going to create a layer on top of the background layer and we're going to call that sold band okay we're going to hit okay and basically what we're going to do is we can lock the background layer for now to mess, make sure we don't mess around with anything all right um make sure my caps lock is off because if your caps is on you're going to get the little crosshairs like that i like to see the point of the pen and right now I'm going to come here. I'm going to click. I'm going to hold shift. And I'm now going to come up to here. And we're going to hold shift again when we do this right here. We're going to now finish that. Now you can tell this is obviously off. So what we're going to do is we're going to hit A on our keyboard. And we're going to select the point, And we're going to hold shift while we do this. Hold down maybe just a little bit more. I'm going to hit actually Command R on my keyboards to pull my rulers up just to kind of see. All right, so on my old one, it was over here, ended here. Pull my guys back up. Command semicolon. And I think I'm going to bring this in a little bit. Okay. All right, so basically that's the band that I want to use. That's good enough. I'm going to turn all my guides off. Shift Command, uh, command semicolon, no shift on that. Uh, what we're now going to do is we are going to click this right here. And there's a few different ways we can do this. Let's see the best way. Let's think about this real quick. Um, okay. I'm going to copy this, hit Command C, and we're now going to hit Command B. So we basically pasted it in back of itself. If you have ever followed any of my other tutorials, I do this a lot, especially on logo designs. Um, so what we're now going to do is we are going to fill this with white. Before you click off of it, it's hidden behind it. And you're going to see it if we move the arrows to the left or the right. So let's move to the left. Um, you know what? Because a second ago, I actually, there we go. All right. Left, there it is. And I go back and go to the right. There it is. All right. So now what we're going to do is we're going to lock an element, not a layer. So we're going to click this band right here that's on top of the white one. And we're going to go to Object Lock Selection or Command 2. The next thing we're going to do is we're going to click on the line segment. You can't see it, but it's there. You need to know it's there right behind the other ribbon or the other band, excuse me, whatever you want to call it. Um, you want to click on the line, okay, and I'm going to hit shift and click on it again. You'll know it's clicked when the two outer um, points, the, uh, the uh, end points, excuse me, they uh, turn hollow. And you're literally just going to hit to the right arrow. Right, that's what we're going to do. And you're going to notice something happening right here. So you're going to want to pull this down, hold shift while you do it, and it's going to snap into place on your artboard. All right, and just visually, you're, you can tell if it lines up or not. The next thing, or here's another way of doing this. You can click on the individual point and go one, two, three, four, five, six till it visually matches the other one. And now come to this point and go up one, two, three, four, five, six. All right, cool. There's just so many ways of doing things. It's just, you know, you just start to you know, use your mind and say, okay, how are we going to do it this time? So the next thing we're going to do is we're going to type out the word sold. Um, actually, you know what? Not, let's not do that yet. Let's come up into object, unlock all. And we're now going to take this first band that was up here and we're going to just fill it with, uh, let's see, this red is a very prominent red. So next thing we're going to do is 
actually, you know, I just want to say something real quick. So this this flyer was uh, is it's interesting because it's got the image of the house with the green grass. Now this the original image looked very much like this house. So normally what. I would do, or many graphic designers, we would think, okay, there's so much heavy green or the color of the house. Let's try to integrate that into the piece somewhere. So like, you know, say these bands, oh, didn't want that. Uh, say these bands are, you know, we go from purple and then now we select and change it to a green. You know, that might look cool, but this company was really trying to brand themselves and the color is what is going to stand out, what's going to get them noticed uh, the most, that purple. So. I decided to do the red sold right on top of it to really make it, you know, so you're seeing sold is one of the first things you see. Then you see the house and then you're now seeing, okay, you know, this company is selling houses, especially big, nice houses. That's what they go after. So uh, the very next thing we're going to do is we're going to come up into the type tool. Like I said a minute or two ago, we're going to click right here. We're just, literally just going to type out sold, S-O-L-D, and we're going to hit escape. We're now going to scale that up, hold shift while you do it. And we're going to put it right here. We're going to make sure it is on the top layer, the band layer. So we're going to come into here in our layers. We're going to click this little box right here, pull it to the top, and it's going to flip it onto that layer. Now what you're going to do is you're going to come into here and let's just see, what did I use for that? Uh, actually, I used Arial Black. All right, so we're going to, I'm literally just going to sample this. You can sample fonts. With the, with the eyedrop tool, not just colors. And you wanna hit E on your keyboard to now transform this. And we're gonna come by the corner, you're gonna see it's gonna give us a rotation type of a, a tool, and we're gonna put that right up there. The very next thing we're gonna do is we're going to come up into effect, stylize drop shadow, and we're gonna hit preview to see what we got. And drop shadows like that, that I just did look like crap, they're muddy, and you don't want to have a drop shadow like that. So you want to do a subtle drop shadow. I'm going to do 0.02 and hit tab, 0.02 again, tab, 0.02 again. All right. That's a very uh, subtle shadow. You can even lower the opacity to like 45. And we're going to, let's see, do we want to do multiply? Actually, yeah, we do want to do multiply because it's black on top of the red. And it's, it's, it's pixelated black. So you want to hit OK. And now we have our sold up there. Um, next thing we're going to do is we're going to click that white because it's sticking out now. We can click it. It's not hidden. We're going to come up to here to effect, uh, apply drop shadow. It's going to apply that little drop shadow on there to pop it off just a little bit more. And the next thing we're going to do, okay, so this is different. This is a different way of doing things. If you watch my layout design bootcamp tutorials, you will know that I take images and I use masks on them to fade out the specific part of a picture sometimes so i'm going to show you a different way to do it in this tutorial and the way that we're going to do it is we're going to come up in here into the rectangle tool and we're going to make a rectangle right here and we are going to fill that rectangle with white which it is already next thing we're going to do is we're going to come up to effect and we're going to go to blur and we're going to type go into gaussian blur and we're literally just going to hit preview and see what we got all right we really don't got anything yet we're going to pull this up Okay, to about, let's see, that's a little bit too much. Okay. Let's say about yeah, 63 pixels, something like that. Okay, and we're going to move it to where we want it to be. Now, if you don't like how it looks right now, you can come into your appearance and you can mess around, get Gaussian Blur and do all that stuff in there again. Or what I do sometimes is I'll copy this and I'll paste it in the front. Command F. You're going to watch, it fades even more. So watch, if I take that away, it was there and I go back forward, boom, it was there. So you know what? Why not? I'm going to, I'm going to use that in this case and I'm just going to now what I want to do with this actually, you know what? Let's create another layer. Why not? I always say I don't use layers, but for the purpose of the tutorial, I'd rather teach you the layer. So we're going to hit layer one and now we're going to click on new layer. So it pops on top of layer one. You can also move them by clicking down. And, and moving them manually. Uh, you're gonna type out uh, background elements or whatever you wanna put there. I'm gonna take this house and I'm gonna put it on background elements. It's still behind everything. And now I'm gonna take this text and I'm gonna put it on this layer too. What's cool about this is say each flyer changes, 
each flyer changes with a different house and a different, you know, obviously each house is going to have its different description there and specs. You're going to make a, a layer for each of them and you're literally going to turn off the layer and turn on the other layer, which is pretty cool. So what we're now going to do is we're going to type out one main street. You can't see it. So let's hit um, escape and find out why we cannot see it because it's in the back. Go to object arrange, bring to front and that's not working either okay cool this is why the, the gaussian blurs i made are still on the top layer we're going to want to pull that to the background layer and we're now going to go to object arrange send that to the back okay one more thing send the image to the back now we're good all right cool all right so we are going to one main street brookville new york Right, and we're going to now change this to Trahan Pro, wherever you say it. In my last tutorial, I said the same thing. I wasn't sure how to say it, but you can correct me if you'd like. Uh, I gotta fix something in here real quick. All right, because my type is stretched out a little bit. Let me just scale that down. Now, I wanna show you guys something cool. All right, so this is bold. Um, I did this in the last tutorial too. I'm gonna put my text over here for right now, you know, right off the board. We're now going to come up into here into, and we're going to center this not by eye, but by actual value. So we're going to come into here in a reference point and put it right in the center. We're now going to take our X point and we're going to take half of eight and a half. And that is four and a quarter. And we're going to type out 4.25 and we're going to hit tab and boom, it pops right into the middle of that. Pretty cool, right? Next thing we're going to do is, um, I actually, you know what? I got to back up again. Uh, you got to hit the center point center justification on the paragraph let's do that x again and you know what practice makes perfect so why not four and a quarter we're now going to go to option click shift this down and we're going to take the bold off we're going to make it regular and i'm actually going to scale it down a little bit more okay if you notice also what i did in there was i took that black and i made it about 80 percent gray it gives it a little bit of a softer feel and i think i did keep the bold so you know what, we'll go back to bold on here. Make that 70% gray. Just to differentiate it from the uh, address. Now, another thing I want to point out is the reason you want this centered justification on the paragraph style is because later on you're going to change these for other listings or whatever other items. And guess what? The new address, as you type it in, it's going to come right out from the center and it's still perfectly centered. How cool is that? So what we're now going to do is we're going to type out that six bedroom for bath, two acres, and three awesome garage doors. All right, next thing we're going to do is go to option. And I'm making different text boxes. You can even click at the end of acres and hit enter and then do sold price. And then that one. Two five million, very nice, very nice. Um, going to come down, make this like fifty five, make it even lighter. All right, that looks pretty cool. I'm gonna take the character. I'm gonna come in here. I'm gonna set the lighting a little bit lower so it's closer. I'm gonna now scale this up a little bit. All right, for me it's just a visual thing. So I, you know, I, there's no rules I'm really following. Um, because, uh, you know, at one point, at some point it's gotta be what feels and looks right. So plus your client's going to make you change all things that break the rules all the time anyway. So now what we're going to do is we're actually going to come back up here and we're going to do the top part. Um, you know, what? I'm literally just going to copy this over cause it's text box at this point. And that's basically the easiest thing. Uh, we're now going to come up into object arrange, bring to front. Okay scale this in a little bit next thing we're going to do is we're going to take that logo okay so now say this is the logo that they provide to us it's ugly because of the fact it's got that white around it so what you want to do is you want to come into the rounded rectangle tool right here and you want to make this a rounded rectangle now oh you know what let's let's even back up even further not further but let's come into the rectangle tool instead all right so i can show this to you because it's fairly new we're going to type out the, uh, draw out the box. And now we're going to come into this little circle right here and we're going to pull it in. How cool is that? 
to get the rectangle, the rounded edge we want. I'm going to actually take that fill. I'm going to make it a none so you can actually see what's behind it. And every time I say that, make that a none. I think it's so funny. I said it once in a tutorial, and um, I think I said like knock out the none. It was really perfect timing. But anyway, um, so yeah. We're now going to do a clipping mask just like we did before. So you're going to select this and you're going to hit hold shift and select the the clipping mask right here. Right click, make clipping mask. Okay, you're going to notice you got some white right there. That's okay. We can hit A on our keyboard and now we're going to hit E and now transform it and scale it up a little bit. I, if you notice, I'm doing a lot of the same things to a lot of, you know, everything. So it's a lot of the, just the same stuff over and over and over and over and over. So if you watch 10 tutorials of mine, you're going to, you're going to learn the same thing. This is going to be like karate kid where you're going to be like, okay, okay, okay. You know, the same thing, but you know what, you're going to be so fast and, and better at this if you, you know, actually pay attention. So, um, next thing we're going to do is hit, uh, come in here in our stroke and we're going to put it white and we're going to come into stroke and we're going to make that, let's see, two, uh, two points. And we're going to now come up here to effect without clicking off anything. Come in stylize, drop shadow, that same value, 0 0.02, 0 0.02, 0 0.02, and we got the logo right, right there. Now we're going to start working on the text on the bottom part of the design, and we're pretty much through all the really hard stuff. So this is just kind of the uh, refining, and then we'll do the bleeding at the end. But what we want to do here is we want to type, uh, we want to get another text box, and we type out the... I'm just going to come in here and I'm going to, where is it? I'm going to copy that. I'm going to hit escape. All right. So the reason I, I put yellow on top of the purple is because yellow is very good at popping out on purple because they're, they're on the opposite sides of the color wheel. And I'm going to move that over. I'm going to move this over. Uh, at one point, the person's photo was in here, so this was all over to the right, and you know, there it did work. Then they got rid of their photo, so I had to kind of relay this out a little bit more. Um, but tech, uh, basically, I'm going to literally copy this stuff over, and what do we got here? We're going to go to Object Arrange, bring to front, make sure everything's in front. I'm going to hit Command R, which I already actually do have on. I'm going to pull a guide to right here. I'm going to turn my guides back on. So you can kind of see where everything really needs to line up. Um, this is very simple. Just the th one text box. Actually, this stuff is in the back. So I got to make sure that doesn't happen. Let's do something really quick. Okay. Um, the same thing with this. Uh, I decided to put on two lines. I actually probably could have had this. Let's see if I could have this run through the bottom. That'll probably work out because it works with this yellow up here. It kind of draws you back into the right side over here. So you don't have this empty little pit right here over here. Um, and I would assume by now that the text boxes is more of an easier thing. So if uh, if you guys have a problem with me uh, speeding through the text boxes, let me know in the comments and, and, and I'll walk through on the next one. But uh, that's just basic, uh, basic stuff right here. It's... The more of the effects and the and the in-depth stuff is is really everything that I did prior to this. But um, I just want to make sure that you know that this is all centered right here. One, two, three. I used three different little text boxes because I knew they were going to be different weights, and I didn't want to have to mess around with leading, which is line space line spacing between the lines, and because it'd be you know different between each of these. So I just decided to make three different boxes, and. The last thing we're going to do is, well, the next thing, I'm going to delete all this because we don't need it anymore. Beautiful. All right, now we're almost there. The next thing we're going to do is we're going to add the bleed. So what we're going to do is, uh, we're not going to do that because we're going to get a funny sound, but we're going to come into our uh, hit A on the keyboard. We're going to open up the, the clipping mask on the left and the right. So we're going to click on the line segment and now hit the right arrow it's going to open up just the clipping mask click off and I'll click again on but just the line this time again we're going to open that up we're now going to select this piece and we're going to go to object lock selection or command 2 we're now going to hit a on our keyboard we're going to select all the points down the right side 
the points of those of those rectangular boxes. Let me see something. I want to actually take these and hit Command Two because I don't want to move screw with those accidentally. Uh, we're gonna now go to the right again with the right arrow. We'll do the same thing to the left, and we're gonna pull that sold. We might have to fix that sold part in a second because you're gonna see it's not gonna go. Yeah, it's gonna mess it up a little bit, a little bit. Same thing with the top of it. Cool, all right. And on the very bottom. Cool, turn our guides off for a second, see what we're working with. All right, so a pull, it messed around with this thing a little bit, but everything looks pretty, um, pretty much how I still want it. And now we're gonna save it for print. What we're gonna do now is we are going to very simply make sure all our layers are unlocked we're going to come into object unlock all so we have nothing that is locked we're going to command a and we're going to make our type into outlines by going to create outlines and very simply we are going to go to file save as we're going to save this as literally test pdf and i'm going to hit save i'm going to make this a high quality print and I'm just gonna uncheck this just to get a small file size, but you won't be able to edit this later on. I mean, you will, but it's gonna be all screwed up and, and um, you know, the image sometimes slices into multiple multiple images. But we're now gonna come into Marks and Bleeds and hit Trim Marks, and we're gonna click that up, that 1 8 that we set in the beginning. We're telling it to add that to the file, and we're now gonna save the PDF. It's telling me saving this document will preserve illustrated editing capabilities unchecked may disable some editing features when the document is read back in do you want to continue absolutely now we are in adobe professional and it is showing us that our pdf has the added crop marks and added bleed and everything looks very good on here and when a printer gets this they're going to want to kiss you right on the lips because they're going to be so happy that you did something right so if you like what you saw in this tutorial, definitely like this tutorial and comment below and let me know your thoughts on, on things you want me to touch on in the future or what, like I said, you learned in this tutorial. Uh, hit the subscribe button, very important, and then share it out on your social networks. Uh, my goal with these new tutorials, these full layout tutorial, tutorials, is to really make them a lot cleaner and make them a lot more clear and understandable for you guys to, to help you out a little bit more. And uh, all I ask in return is that you just share it out to everybody you know, um, because as you know, YouTube is a huge community, and uh, I want to make sure that the right people find my videos. So I will see you all for the next layout tutorial. Have a great night, everybody. Peace.